and welcome. This is Ruth and again I have another video from Tonic Studios. This one is Pretty Pentagon's Mortis Box Die Set and there are 43 different dies and you can see some ideas on the front of how you can use this. This is obviously a reduced size. Actually that's quite important because on another die set someone asked me how you make the mini one but that is just a little idea of something that you can make and they've reduced the size of it on there. It may not be that obvious to everyone. It creates a beautiful pentagon mortise box and the smallest finished box size is 122mm by 128mm by 68mm which is 4.8 inches by 5 inches by 2.7 inches and I'm glad they've got the sizes on there now. So there we are, front and back are some examples and you'll see all of the different dies and what they're used for on this area of the back here as well. But most importantly Inside we've not only got the dies, but there are the instructions as well. Now obviously if you're watching this video You don't really need to worry too much about those instructions because I'm going to show you through it and show you how to use it But uh, it is called mortise and that's because of this little piece here on that die set They fold together and fit through the joints something similar to a mortise uh, joint if you know anything about joinery so We'll have a little look at these dies and then I'm going to pick out some card and we'll just get cracking with it because it does look really lovely. It's stackable as you see here. You can make a small box or you can layer them up and you can also keep it flat on the bottom like this or you can use uh, these little dies here to create feet on it. And um, there's a little fold out piece here. The little area that's at, in between all these layers is created by this part here. Well, I see loads of dies that there that could be used for all sorts of things as well as this beautiful box. So don't forget to use all of those beautiful ones there to make toppers for your cards. And I'm sure you could think of lots of ways of doing those. Some of these are verso, so they don't have outside cutting edges and that will cut the pattern, oh, this one as well, into your card, that beautiful bubble effect one there. We'll cut that into your card and you'll be able to open the card up and just have that kind of lacy effect or you can put card on behind it but you can also use them for shaker cards or all sorts of things and you can see lots of different elements here that you could use for different things but for the box itself this part here then is the sort of base part and um, you can see here uh, where you will fold these tabs up and then you use most of the rest of them are used for decoration but this die then creates the sort of panels where the mortise comes in and this is the area that folds and then this is the side part here that you glue onto these tabs so you can have a deeper one a deeper one here or a narrower one here and excuse me rushing but <laughs> the thunder has just got crazy outside I actually it's so bright I can't see any lightning but um, I'm just going to go and pick out some card and maybe turn the phone off just for a little bit until all of this dies down it's really noisy and I'm not too fond of the, the lightning either. So before I do go, don't forget, if you do like this kind of thing, to subscribe to my channel. I would love you to do that and hit the notification bell. You'll be able to see loads more, as I always say. And um, if you enjoy it, at the end, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And uh, let me know what you think in a little comment if you have time. I always appreciate that. I'll be back. Hopefully it'll be a bit quieter. Well, I dithered a bit about the colour because I was going to go for something really bright and then I decided to go the total opposite. So I've picked some black card out and I've cut five of these pieces with the little hinge part on there, or the little mortise, whatever it is. And I have cut two of these panels and then I'm going to decorate them at the end because it's better to do that and then you can get the placement right this time. So first of all, what I'm going to do is make up these side panels and I'll have to go ahead and uh, fold them all in this same way here. So they're going to get like this. You need to fold two valley folds here and a mounted fold in the centre and then we'll fold these two little pieces in as well. And when you get that like that, you want to glue this part here and here to, to this other part behind it so that it lines up and then you have, there you are, you can see it there. That's what you're aiming for there. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other four pieces. Now 
want to take these little tabs and just pop them into the little open areas here on the next panel and work your way around like that. Maybe you can see it better there. So the little tabs here just go straight in there and they actually get held together by the little um, pieces that go on here. But if you want, you could possibly just stick a little piece of glue in there, a little bit of glue in there anyway, just to hold them as you're working your way around. But carry on with the five of them until you have the uh, shape finished. I've gone ahead and cut five of these out for the top and five out for the bottom. So I've used this die and I thought this was really nice to go along with it. So it looks quite uneven just at the moment and you don't actually even need glue in there. It's probably better not to put too much in. I just used it for the first one or two to get it going. But these are the pieces then that hold it all in place and you'll glue these onto the corners there. Just right down to where the you see right there where this little piece sits out and just make sure as you're holding it together that you've got those edges pushed right in there and then you can pop one on at the top and one on at the bottom and work your way right around and there we are there pieces are glued on the whole way around there now and I've got one of these large pentagons here and I have burnished all the little fold lines to face upwards and I'm going to put glue on there and then pop this over here and that will form the base of the box. Once you've got those panels in place then you'll be able to fit these little pieces in. So I've cut decorative details for all of there and it was only whenever I had the wall glued in I realised that I had actually put these upside down. I thought that this lovely clean edge would be fitting up against here but instead they should be the opposite way around and I didn't realise until I went to put the feet on so they wouldn't be able to have feet like that. But I have cut out this little shape and indeed I could use that for feet and that would just sit like that so it's not a massive problem but uh, they should actually go the other way around with the flat edge to the bottom and that means that up here then the flat edge would be and these would be the opposite way around but uh, you could put different little feet on there you could put little buttons or you could put the little uh, tops of your nouveau drops or something on there as well or indeed you could just have it flat without any feet at all I'm leaving it flat because uh, I prefer that than this, but that, that definitely could be used. Now I've got the piece for the lid, so I've done exactly the same thing as I did for the base there, and I've folded and burnished all these score lines, and I'm going to lay it down flat again, and I've cut five of these. Now there are two different widths you can have, I'm having the narrower one, and there is a slightly wider one there as well, and I'm going to pop these on here, I'll glue them the whole way around, and then we just do the same thing as we've done here on there and uh, uh, we can start then to decorate the top. I've got a piece cut out already and I'm just going to glue it on there and then go ahead with the rest of it once I get these side panels on. I went ahead then and made up the lid as I was showing you there and then I added these little corner pieces on so obviously I had to do them exactly the same way as I had done for the base there and then I took I really really like this one here with a lovely little dotty design on the sides of it so I cut that one out in black and put it on the top there and then I took the circle and this one which says you make me smile and put that on top of the lid so I have that one ready and then I took 
this die because I thought that this looked a bit plain on the inside and I took this one which is actually the die that you would use for the feet if you put these up the other way around and I have put them inside there on the corners. I've gone ahead in the meantime and made up another box just to show you how that would look the other way around. So I've gone for red and white this time and I have made it here. There's my box. It's not quite finished yet because I uh, haven't decorated this. In fact, I'm not going to this time, but I have put the semicircles going on the other way this time. So you can see here, the way I've put them f with the flat edge to the, this uh, centre part, and now I've put them to the top. And then I have taken the little die that I showed you there a minute or two ago with the this part in it, and then the two dies that fit inside that. So I've, I've put these on as feet and that just makes a totally different little box there because it can sit up on these little feet whereas this one is flat. So that's two different ways of doing it. I've made the lid then in the same way and instead of using the narrower sides that I've used for this one, I've used the broader ones and I used this little die then to hold all of those together and that uh, just fits in there. This time I thought I may have made the lid just a wee bit too tight on that one. So you can see in there where I just didn't push the sides as closely together and that gives me a lot more room because this this card is quite thick and then with all these layers on top. So I've done that. I have put my hexagon pentagon on top there and then I love this one here. I actually think that would be really, really beautiful with sort of watery blues and colours like that. Um, it's kind of bubbly looking but uh, I wanted to stick with my red and white theme so I've taped these two dies together and cut that out in white and that's going to go on there. I've glued that on then and then I took this circle again in black and this with this die in the centre in white and I've glued that on there and that says heartfelt thanks and then I took this beautiful little die. I really love this one and I can see this being used for all sorts of things and cards and whatnot. Definitely there's a, a few of those in there. This one as well actually. I haven't used this one but that would fit on there as well and would be really really beautiful. So I thought that would be lovely in black as well just to give a little bit of definition to it and there it is. Another pretty little box. I thought I would like to try something different with this as well as the box and I know I could have made a card or something but I think I'll go for something completely different and hope you like it as well. So I have cut out two of this base shape again and I have burnished all the score lines and everything facing upwards. On the second one then I die cut the die with the flowers through the centre of it. So that's this one and I just placed that on there and cut it with no cutting edge so that it cuts the pattern in and then as you can see there I've gone ahead with some uh, red high tack tape and I have uh, die cut a little hexagon, oh keep saying hexagon, pentagon of acetate and attach that on with this tape. Now what I actually did was I put this through with my construction weight acetate and it doesn't cut the whole way through but it gives a really really good indentation and you can then you can follow that around with your scissors. So that's been attached on there. I've cut the smaller one, slightly smaller uh, pentagon out in red and I'm going to pop that on there. I'll glue that in there and then on here I've taken three dies and made a little a little kind of frame. So I've got this one with the outside edge and this one and then this smaller one. Yeah, it's the one that I have taped onto here. So these two don't fit exactly through the die cutting machine together because you can see they kind of overlap and you don't want to damage them like that. So just cut this one out first of all and then you can put the pattern into it with this and the outside edge die here and that will give you this beautiful little frame here which I'm going to glue on top. Now I've taken a loop of red ribbon and I've glued the two ends of it together there and I'm going to put, pop it through, see just there where the two little pieces um, fold over and there's a little gap. I'm going to pop it in there and glue it down. I've got some sequins so depending on whatever colour you've used for 
this, you know, if you if you go ahead and make it, you can pick out some sequins that you've maybe already got. And I've got Vanilla Delight and some Olive Green. I've actually got quite a few sequins and I don't think I use them enough, so uh, this is a really good idea. Here we go. I don't need to worry about using a spoon or anything this time. I need plenty of sequins in there because that's quite thick and it's a big area. And you see... No, I might just stick with the green and not put any other colour in at all. Yep, so that looks fine. It's quite a few, but it does take quite a few in there. You could actually just section this off if you wanted in behind this area and then it wouldn't have to go right out to the edge. But uh, now I'm going to put glue on the insides of all of these and slip this over there and I'll have a lovely little decoration. and you can see I added a little sequin on here and one in here and I'm just thinking as I look at it that you could probably write someone's name or die cut the letters of someone's name if it would fit in there or even stamp it and cut it out or even just a little tiny sentiment on the centre of that and that would be beautiful and if you wanted to jazz it up a little bit more you could put a little bow or something on there or even a little bow die from one of the other sets that you've got. So I think that turned out really well. Very, very happy with everything. That's uh, the one without the feet on it. There's the one with the feet, which is obviously quite a bit taller. So we've got three sort of heights going on there. Oh, I don't know why, but just looking at the three different heights in that, they reminded me of the Giant's Causeway. I think I need a break. It's too hot. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed it. I have. And um, if you have enjoyed it, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and leave me a little comment and let me know what you think and I hope that you will maybe try to copy these or do something your own that's sort of guided by this and if you do you can let me know and let me see the photographs of that as well I always love to see what everybody else is making if you have enjoyed it don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit the notification bell subscribe like anything that you want that can help the channel along a little bit I always appreciate my affiliate links to the die set and anything else that I've used that is still available will be down below in the description of the video too. So thank you so, so much to everybody who uses those. It's always very much appreciated. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye bye.